Hello Internet, welcome to Making Money. My name's Eric and this is your Daily Dollar, our financial segment where I give you one lesson every day to help you reach your financial goals. So we're still talking about investing. We took a break to do Valentine's Day yesterday, <laughs> but we're still talking about investing. Um, and like I had mentioned a few days ago, I gave you a few things to keep in mind when you're start, first starting to think about investing, getting into investing. Um, and we're going to go over another one of those today, a little bit more detail. And that is emotional investing. So we've talked about your emotions a few times now. <laughs> we did an entire lesson just on managing your emotions when it comes to your finance. But this is such an important thing and something you really got to wrap your head around that we're going to do another lesson today focused just on investing emotions. And this is, this is big. This is really where emotions can break your strategy, can cause you to, you know, in all, you know, good faith to destroy what you've worked to build up. So, so yeah, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, the first thing that I want to uh, come across when it comes to emotional investing is that when people come into investing for the first time, a lot of times their immediate shock reaction to changes in the market is the inverse <laughs> or the opposite of what they should be doing in that situation. Not everybody is susceptible to this, but it does seem to be extremely common. Actually to the point, and I had mentioned this in a previous video, that there is such a thing called contrary investing, where you actually invest the opposite of how most people are investing, just because on average, <laughs> people tend to invest at almost the opposite times than they should. And that's because of that gut instinct. And it's a really hard thing to fight. So today we're going to talk about some ways that you can actually manage your investing accounts, your profile, your portfolio is the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, uh, despite having strong emotions. All right. This will help you kind of gear in a little bit to to what you should be doing. So very first thing that you can do, especially if you are, you know, taken by your emotions is to start slow. And this is true regardless of if emotions are, you know, a big influence on you or not. Um, when we're talking about investing, it's a good idea to, tar uh, to start slow. You're still learning. All right. This is the time to, again, fail faster. This is where you want to make those mistakes. This is where it's okay to make those mistakes. Nobody wants to make mistakes, but if you were to make a mistake in investing, it's better to lose five bucks at the beginning than $5,000 later on. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, start slow. When you're trying things out, put a little money in, you know, feel free to, but you know, watch it, learn from it. If it goes south, you know, okay, this is what I did in this situation. It didn't work out. Um, while the market is not always <laughs> the same and past history doesn't always dictate what will happen in the future, you can learn some very useful lessons from trying things out in the market. Um, the next thing you want to do if you want to quell your emotions <laughs> is to create a hypothesis. And this is true again among all investors. It's a good idea when you're starting out investing or even if you're late in the game in investing, you should have a hypothesis. And by what I mean by this is that you should have a an idea of, OK, based on these factual information, it should be a hypothesis based on facts and evidence based on, you know, the earnings of this company, company X. Um, over the last 10 years, their increased dividend every year, you know, they've, they've consistently made more money and it looks like they're going to continue to do so for the future. They've got some really interesting projects coming up. I think they're going to do a great job, right? Based on hard evidence, I'm going to invest a hundred dollars into this stock. All right. Once you have a firm hypothesis based on facts, hold to that hypothesis. Even if things don't go your way, hold true. Um, and the reason why I'm going to say this is kind of a, a roll into the next point. Once you've set a hypothesis, lock in for a, a period of time. 
let's say, okay, I believe this hypothesis is true, and in three months, I'm gonna reevaluate. Until then, I'm gonna continue forward with this hypothesis, despite what happens in the market. Now, the reason why you wanna do this is, yeah, the market might go crazy up right away, and you might make a lot of money, and your hypothesis might end up being true after those three months. You might notice that once you buy that stock, you know, the stock starts to go down a little. This is where your emotions might take hold, where you go, oh no, I'm losing money, I wanna sell. But this is the definition of selling at a low. <laughs> yes, it could continue to go down. Yes, in three months, it could be worse off than it was when you were thinking of selling. But if you are basing your hypothesis on fact, then chances are it might take a dip, but it might come back up. And you might be right about that stock overall. In three months, if you look back and go, excellent, I was right even though it went down, then you saved yourself an emotional reaction. If you look back and go, oh crap, I lost a bunch of money, reevaluate the hypothesis. Determine what you did wrong in your analysis. It may have been a fluke. Um, there may have been some you know, circumstances out of your control that you didn't know about at the time, but learn from that. Use that as an example. Maybe your hypothesis was sound and you can use a similar hypothesis again as long as you know, some black swan event like you know, a pandemic <laughs> doesn't happen. Um, or maybe you learn that, okay, you know, this hypothesis is flawed because of this reason. Next time I'll take that into consideration. So having a hypothesis and evaluating after a period of time, not after a reaction to what happens to the stock is a good way to take your emotions out of it and work with just the facts. The next thing is I think probably the most important when it comes to investing. Um, and if you are looking to day trade, well, hopefully emotions are not a factor for you because you really have to take your emotions out if you're looking at something like trading. Um, the big thing here is that you shouldn't try to time the market. I know that sounds weird because I know that's what everybody's trying to do, right? <laughs> we wanna to try to buy in at the right time. We wanna to try to sell at the right time. In reality, if you try to time the market, chances are you will be wrong. It is next to impossible. It is extremely hard. I cannot emphasize how hard it is to really time the market. Yes, there are people that do it. Yes, there are people that make money at it. But even you know, expert financial advisors, people that do this for years and years and years and have all these fancy algorithms and data, they still can't do it consistently because there's so many variables and there's so much that we don't know about the future that will drive the stock market. And just because something happens that should cause the stock market to do something, it doesn't mean it always does. It may go in the opposite direction for all we know. <laughs> Um, so trying to time the market is not something you should be aiming to doing, especially if your emotions are at play here. And a best way to avoid timing the market goes back to our discussion a couple days ago. Manage your risk. By diversifying and dollar cost averaging into stocks that you have a strong hypothesis on, you take out that emotional element even more. Now you're just, okay, I'm gonna put $10 in, every day, every week for the next three months into this stock, no matter what happens to it, all right? Because I believe in this stock, because there are firm fundamentals, because there's a track record, all of these facts say that my hypothesis is true, so I'm gonna dollar cost average into this over time. In fact, let's make it better. Instead of it being a stock, it's an index fund. Let's say the S&P right? It's a bunch of different stocks that we're buying into, all right? So when we buy an index fund, it's already going to be partially diversified for us. Yes, um, certain indexes like the S&P are heavy in things like tech or finance, um, but it is better than just buying into one sector or one single stock because that further quells some of that risk. It manages some of the risk. So if you're looking to take a hold of your emotions when it comes to investing, start slow, create a hypothesis with a time frame. don't time the market, 
and then manage your risk. If you do those things, it'll definitely help with your emotions. So best of luck. I know this is a tough thing to do. Um, and again, you know, that start slow is probably the best advice right up front. Um, but do what you feel is right at the end of the day. I'm not a financial advisor, um, but a lot of this information is tough learned. I have made mistakes myself. I have learned a ton from them. I have learned from other people's mistakes. Luckily, <laughs> I didn't have to make all the mistakes myself. Um, but learning from other people's mistakes is also a great way to kind of pick up information without having to go through the heartache yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. Feel free to subscribe if you are. Um, I'm interested. Are you just getting into investing? Are you worried about emotions taking control of you? Are you someone that's been investing for a while? Has emotions taken control? <laughs> That'd be an interesting story to hear, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, as always, I will see you guys tomorrow for another lesson. Adios.